name is Peter Donnelly. I live on the central coast of New South Wales, Australia. And I was brought up as a uh, boy uh, in a coastal town, which is a surfing town. And I did pretty much what everyone else does in a town like that. I grew up surfing. One day when I was looking for something to read, we were about to go on a trip to Western Australia, I started to uh, look in a bookshop for something to read. And I saw a book on the shelf and it said Buddhism. And I thought that looks interesting. I didn't know what it was all about. But I thought that'll be interesting to read. A long trip from New South Wales to Western Australia, so I thought I'll read this and see what it's all about. And I started to look into it and got deeper and deeper and deeper involved in it. And it took over my whole life, everything that I wanted to do. Well, after I picked up that book in a bookshop on Buddhism, I started to read it and I just got totally involved in it. And it started saying things like you have to, there is a nirvana that you can have, which is like the heaven that we have as a Christian. And you have to follow a certain path to get there. And it's taught reincarnation so that when you die, you get reborn again as a, in another form and you get punished for what you did in this life or blessed for what you did good. And I just got completely involved in it. So I then started to search for more books on the topic, Buddhism and Eastern religion, particularly Buddhism. And I just gathered as many books as I could on the Buddhist teaching, both from Western teachers and from the writings of Buddha himself. So I really got involved in it and nothing else mattered. I just got completely um, immersed in the whole thing. And it wasn't long before I decided, well, I'm, there's no point doing a course, uh, finishing my course because nothing really mattered then. I just had to know the answers to all these questions. I wanted Nirvana. I wanted to have enlightenment. That was a big thing. That, that's all I wanted. So the search really got deeper and deeper. And I saw, I guess I, uh, cut myself off from my friends a little bit. They were wondering what was happening to me and all this sort of thing, but uh, I just got very deeply involved in this Buddhism. Kept searching. When I went to the East and I had a look at the countries where Buddhism is practiced and Hinduism and other religions, I soon realized that they weren't the utopia, the spiritual utopia that I thought they'd be because you read things in books and you have an idea of what a Buddhist country must be like if they follow these teachings. But you soon get disillusioned because you go there and you see all sorts of materialism and worldliness just like we have here. Well, when I went to Sri Lanka, I had a very interesting experience there because I was traveling with an American friend and we went to the top Buddhist monastery in Kandy in Sri Lanka and I thought well if I'm going to really see the holy men this is where I'll see them and this is where I'll get the answers I'm looking for so we went to this monastery in Kandy and this American friend and I went up to the to the head Buddhist and we asked to see him the head monk he couldn't speak English so we went to see him and he spoke through an interpreter and I was waiting I was waiting to get the answer to life from this head Buddhist monk. He started telling us, and while I was waiting with bated breath, and then he started to talk through the interpreter, and the interpreter said, what His Holiness wants you to do is to go into Europe and buy him a brand new Peugeot and a whole lot of very expensive sound equipment and gear because he can't do it himself. The government doesn't allow him to do it as a citizen of the country. So I was completely disillusioned then. I thought, here's the holiest man of all, and all he's interested in is getting worldly possessions. When he's telling everyone else, you have to forsake these things in order to get nirvana. So this disillusionment just kept on happening as I traveled through this place. Well, when I went to India, I I started to come into contact with Christians and there was one occasion when I was sitting on a park bench in Madras and this old Indian Christian 
came up and sat next to me on the park bench. And I was sitting there just looking around, looking at musing on life and wondering, you know, what, still meditating on all the things on what's the meaning of life. And this old Indian Christian said to me, tell me, what religion are you? Good way to start a conversation. And I said to him, I'm a Buddhist. And then he looked at me and shook his head and said, no, 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 that is not good. That is not good. You should be a Christian. And I looked at him and I said, why? And he started telling me about Jesus and how that Jesus came into the world to save us. And he said, you shouldn't be a Buddhist. That is no good. But at the time, I, did, I really dismissed him. I said, oh, you know, that's your opinion. But I started to think. And that sort of thing happened a few times. In a, in a Buddhist Hindu country, a Christian would come up to me and tell me about Jesus. By this stage in India, when I got to India, I've been away from home for about 14 months, a bit over a year. And I started to really feel an emptiness inside. That Buddhism, all my studies into Buddhism, and what I thought I had achieved, I actually thought I had achieved Nirvana, through all the teachings that they said and what you're supposed to experience, I actually believe I did experience what the Buddhists can experience in Nirvana. But still there was this terrible void, this emptiness inside that I knew couldn't be fulfilled. So I had searched for 14 months, gone to the place where I thought the answers were and still felt like I hadn't achieved it. I felt this terrible emptiness inside. So then I guess I was ready to receive the truth then. And when I was in Bombay in India, Mumbai as it is now, I was sitting in a hotel room looking out the window in this bottom basement dingy little room in Bombay, looking out at all of the sea of humanity, just thinking, where is everyone going? And a group of Christians who were preaching on the street corners at, at, at that time through India um, got a hold of me. And they took me up into a room and they said, um, look, what you've got to do is to ask Jesus to come into your life. And I was ready for that because I realised that what I was doing, there was no hope in. I'd had a complete emptiness inside that couldn't be fulfilled so I did I prayed that first prayer very simple I said Lord if this is true if you are the Savior if you are the Savior of sinners like me I ask you to save me come into my life and I was expecting some great big explosion nothing happened but it was at that point that I first received Christ and I've never looked back when I was in India I didn't actually have a Bible with me I was just reading all of the Buddhist literature but my mother sent me a letter. Not many letters got through, but one got through. And she said, she was very concerned for me. And she said, it is said of Buddha that he is the light of Asia. But Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And that stuck. That really hit home because I thought, well, if Jesus is the light of the world, then he is the real saviour. And I've never forgotten that and never looked back. And that's about 30 odd years ago now. And the truth of that is still with me. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who followeth me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And that is the truth. It's the truth today, and it was the truth then. Or what I would say to everyone who's searching in whatever religion or whatever philosophy that you're involved in, is that the deeper you go into it, the more you'll find out the truth of what Solomon said, and he said, vanity, vanity, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Which means that the more you search into man-made religion, the more you'll realize there's nothing in it. You have to come to the only one who can deliver us from our sin, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, he who comes to me will never walk in darkness. And he who comes to me will have the complete forgiveness of their sins. Because Jesus came into the world to do for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. We can't save ourselves. We can't get rid of our corruption and sin. But Jesus did when he went to the cross. And that's the truth of the gospel. And everyone who's searching, I'd say, consider the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Savior of the world and he can save you as he did me.